little bit bigger. Yeah, sure. Okay, then we're ready to continue. Uh, this uh, lecture notes is uh, also, as mentioned, uploaded in Infronter, so you can find it there. Uh, we have now seen the four steps of an hypothesis uh, uh, of an uh, induction proof. First, the hypothesis thing we want to prove. The second initial step or the beginning step start with the lowest possible value and then point three the assumption we can assume if the initial step is correct we can assume that one particular number k is correct and then the fourth uh, induction step is to prove that if the hypothesis a formula or statement is still valid if we increase by one. And these types of induction proofs are valid for, uh, uh, for integer, <coughs> not fractional numbers. So maybe start on zero or one and two, three, four, five, and so on. Uh, this first example, which is also explained in, the, uh, in, in, this, uh, uh, in this lecture note, is to prove that the sum <coughs> of the n first in, uh, integer numbers can be shown as the with the formula n multiplied by n plus 1 divided by 2. So let's now s first start with the, in, in, uh, with the, the initial step. Yeah, let me just do it on the, on the blackboard. Uh, the initial step, n is equal to 1, the lowest number, okay? The sum of a series 1 should be equal to the n number, which is in this case is uh, 1. 1 multiplied by 1 plus 1, which is 2, divided by 2, which of course is 1. So here we have proven that the initial condition is correct. The sum of the first element in this series, which is 1, is equal to the result when, uh, when multiplying this uh, expression there. n, n plus 1, divided by 2. So this is OK, which means we can continue. Since the initial condition is true, we will continue with the assumption that if n is equal to k, the formula is still correct. Then we will have the formula uh, or the expression which looks almost like the hypothesis here. But now we will replace the n number with a k. n is now a variable k is one particular number which we don't exactly know the value of. And this should now be expressed as k multiplied by k plus 1 divided by 2. Since the initial condition is correct, we can assume that for one particular number k, this will also be correct. And what will happen if we increase by 1, if k is equal to 6, then k plus 1 is equal to 7, for example. If k is 1000, k plus 1 is 1001. And the idea here is that we should prove that by increasing by 1 from a true condition in the initial step, the formula or the statement is still correct. So let's now see what will happen if we increase by 1 from the assumption here. Then we will have the series 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus plus k plus the new number k plus 1. And this should now be equal to replace n with the highest number in the series, which now is k plus 1, will be k plus 1 multiplied by k plus 1 plus 1, k plus 2, 
divided by 2. If we can prove that this is correct, then the induction proof is also correct. So what can we see here? We have a series of numbers, 1, 2, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, and so on, up to one particular number. But we also know that the series here will be the same up to this part as we have here. The first k numbers are the same as in the assumption step. The only difference is that we have included one more number, which is higher than the previous last <coughs> number. And since we have proven the initial step, we can just now replace the formula for the assumption uh, with the series, the sum of the series up to k here. So this will now be k, k plus 1 divided by 2 plus the new number. Like this. And this should now be equal to the right side of this expression. k plus 1 multiplied by k plus 2. k multiplied by k will be the square of k. k multiplied by 2. 2k. 1 multiplied by k is k. And 1 multiplied by 2 is 2. Divided by 2. So, if we can prove that this, the left-hand side here, is equal to the right-hand side, then this <coughs> formula is true. And let's try to continue. k multiplied by k plus 1 will be k to the power of 2 plus k. Let's now just remove the denominator, multiply the whole expression by 2, then this and this will disappear, and this will be multiplied by <coughs> 2, which means plus 2k plus 2, which seems to be rather equal to what we have here. <coughs> and the right-hand side and the left-hand side can both be expressed as k to the power of 2 plus 3k plus 2. This expression can be simplified to this one, and this expression can also be simplified to this one. Since the result is equal on both sides, we know that this induction proof is correct. So then we have proven this formula will be correct for all positive integer numbers of n. Either if n is equal to 1, as we have seen in the initial step, if it's 10, if it's 1,000, 1 million, whatever, we have proven that by increasing by 1 at a time, the formula is still correct. And since the base case, the initial condition, is correct, 1 is correct means that 2 is correct, which means that 3 is correct, which means that 4 is correct, and so on. This formula is valid for all possible positive integer numbers of n. So that was the first example, which is also described in, in this lecture note. I will go through some other examples. Um, yeah, here is the steps in, in the induction proofs, which we have now shown also on, on the blackboard here. So let's now look at another example. Um, what is important in induction proofs, these are the four steps, or the hypothesis and the three steps in the, pr uh, in, in the proof. Uh, n equal to 1, sometimes it can start with another number, sometimes 0, sometimes 2 or 3, or uh, this will be dependent on the actual situation. Uh, so but, the, but the initial step should always contain the lowest possible value for the given statement or the given formula. <coughs> <coughs> oh, 
Okay, let's now try another hypothesis. Uh, let's try the hypothesis of the sum of the series of the square of the positive numbers. 1 to the power of 2 plus 2 to the power of 2 plus 3 to the power of 2 and up to one particular number n to the power of 2. This, the statement is here, this should be equal to the formulation or the, the formula n multiplied by n plus 1 multiplied by 2n plus 1 divided by 6. Like this. This is the statement. We should now prove if this is correct or not. Okay, initial step, n equal to 1, <coughs> lowest element in the series, 1 to the power of 2 is 1, should be equal to n equal to 1, which means 1, multiplied by 1 plus 1, which is 2, multiplied by 2, multiplied by 1, plus 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. One multiplied by two multiplied by three divided by six. And of course one multiplied by two by three, six divided by six is equal to one. So this is also okay. The initial condition, the initial step is here correct. Then we can continue. And assume that this series of squared numbers up to a given number k should be equal to k k plus 1 2 k plus 1 divided by 6. This is now the assumption since the initial condition is correct, as shown here in the step number two. And then the assumption will be same as the last time. The series will remain the same up to the number k, and then add the new element which is one higher than the previous one. k plus 1 to the power of 2. This is now the series of the squared numbers up to one particular number, k plus 1. And then just replace the n's here with the k plus 1 value. k plus 1 k plus 1 plus 1 is k plus 2. 2 k plus 1 will be 2 k plus 2 plus 1, 2 k plus 3, divided by 6. So this is now the formula for the induction step, we should now prove that the sum of the series on the left-hand side is equal to the expression given on the right-hand side. And as we just saw in the previous example, the sum of the k first elements can be replaced with the formula from the assumption step, since the k first elements are exactly the same, 1, 2, 3, up to k. So here we have k, k plus 1, 2k plus 1, divided by 6, plus k plus 1 to the power of 2, should now be equal to the right-hand side expression here. We can try to... Yeah, 
we can just print it as it is first k plus 1 k plus 2 2k plus 3 divided by 6 and then of course we can just uh, remove the 6 or multiply the whole expression by 6 then we we just remove the uh, denominators there and multiply this one with with 6 which will mean the same expression here so let's go quite fast through the calculations here uh, multiply the parentheses, get one more uh, simplified expression as we have now, uh, and see if the right-hand side and the left-hand side is equal. So then, let's go quite fast through this. You should, of course, try to, to go maybe more into the details by, by yourself, but here the calculations will end up with k to the power of 2 plus k multiplied by 2k plus 1. This multiplied to this parenthesis, still this one, plus k plus 1 to the power of 2. This one. And of course multiply this by 6. And then the right-hand side should now be uh, k to the power of 2 plus 2k plus k plus 2 multiplied by 2k plus 3. <coughs> so we are multiplying in the parentheses here. Uh, and try to simplify furthermore, multiply these two parentheses, we end up with 2k to the power of 3 plus k to the power of 2 plus 2k to the power of 2 plus k plus 6k to the power of 2 plus 12k and plus 6 should be equal to the expression here. Multiply this parenthesis with this one. Let's now write it here. It will be 2k to the power of 3 plus 3k to the power of 2 plus 6k to the power of 2 plus 9k plus 4k plus 6. multiply these two parentheses to this one. And now we can simplify the left-hand side and the right-hand side and end up with the formula or the expression 2k to the power of 3 plus 9k to the power of 2 plus 13k plus 6. The left-hand side and the right-hand side will both end up with this expression when simplified. And then we have also proven this formula. So also this hypothesis is correct. And uh, yeah, it's not a coincidence that these two first examples are used because these examples uh, are actually the mathematical proofs or th these are used when you come to the forecasting method on the regression analysis or try to, to find uh, uh, or, or the exponential smoothing, try to find, uh, find a line which is best according to the given, uh, uh, so, some uh, well best uh, fitted to, to the given measured historical values. So here we have two, we have seen two different, uh, uh, different induction proofs on uh, two different formulas. The sum of, <coughs> first, the from, the, from the paper, the sum of the, uh, of the series of the, uh, in the integer numbers up to one particular <coughs> number n, and also the sum of the series of the square of the uh, first 
integer numbers up to also one particular number. We have proven the formulas for these two, these two expressions uh, here. Uh, I will go through uh, some other uh, proofs too before we continue here. And uh, then I will show the other hypo another up hypothesis where we should first check the initial step. Is this correct for the base case or the initial case? Then we can assume if step two is correct, we can assume that it is correct for one particular double k and then have to prove that is still correct for k plus one when we increase this number by one. Okay, let's see another series here. We have uh, a series 1 plus 4 plus 7 plus continue and the expression 3n minus 2. This is the expression there. If the, uh, well, we have to also now look at the index numbers. So the index numbers will then be, this is one, of course, the lowest number. Index number two is this number. Index number three, three <coughs> is this one. So index number one, three multiplied by one minus two is one. Index number two, three multiplied by two is 6 minus 2 is 4. And index number 3, 3 multiplied by 3, 9 minus 2 is 7, and so on. So you will find the number in the series by, in, um, by um, putting in, an in the index number of the, the number in the series for the n value in this expression here. And this series, the sum of these numbers, should now be expressed or the statement is that this can be expressed by n multiplied by 2n minus 1. This is the hypothesis. We should now check whether this is correct or not. Okay, base case, initial, initial step, n is equal to 1. The index 1 is the lowest number in the series, which is 1, should now be equal to 1 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 1 minus 1. 1 multiplied by 1, which is correct. So here, the initial step is OK. We can continue. Then we can assume, as we have seen in the two previous examples, we just replace the n in the hypothesis with a given number k. 1 plus 4 plus 7 plus up to 3k minus 2 should now be expressed with the formula k 2k minus 1. And then we have to try to prove this by induction, by using step 4, the induction step. Which means that we have one more number in the series. We still have 1 plus 4 plus 7 up to 3k minus 2. But now we also need to include, uh, include the higher number, 3 k plus 1 minus 2. And this should now, if the statement is correct, be equal to k plus 1, 2, k plus 1, 
minus 1. Replace the n in the hypothesis with the highest number in the series, which, which is expressed by k plus 1. And still, if this is correct, if the assumption is correct, we can replace the first part of the series with this formula. K to K minus 1 plus the new factor here 3K plus 1 3K plus 3 and minus 2. Okay. We have the assumption here that the for a given number k, this formula should represent the sum of the first k numbers in the series. And then by induction, we will try to prove whether this is correct when we increase from k to k plus 1, from 6 to 7, from 1000 to 1001, or whatever increase by 1. Then the series for the first case k numbers are exactly the same as we have seen in the assumption step, but we have to include one higher number here. And the expression for the higher number is found by using this formula and replace the n by the highest number k plus 1. So then 3 n will now be 3 multiplied by the k plus 1, which will be 3k uh, plus 3, and minus 2, which is the last part of the expression here. And this should now, according to the statement, be equal to the formula n multiplied by 2n minus 1, but now this the n should be replaced by k plus 1, then we have k plus 1 here, and 2 multiplied by k plus 1, minus 1, which will be uh, it will be, let's see, k plus 1, 2 k plus 2, minus 1. And let's now try to simplify here a bit. This one, 2k to the power of 2, minus k, plus 3k, plus 3, minus 2, which is plus 1. And this can again be 2k to the power of 2 minus k plus 3k should be plus 2k plus 1. This is now the left-hand side. And if we try to multiply the right-hand side, we will get 2k to the power of 2, k multiplied by 2k is 2k to the power of 2, and this is, uh, yeah, will of course be 2k plus 1 to make it simpler. So then we have k plus 1 multiplied by 2k plus 1. This will be 2k to the power of 2. And uh, then we have k multiplied by 1 and 2k multiplied by 1, which is 3k, or k plus 2 k, and 1 multiplied by 1 is of course 1, which means that here we will have the expression 2k to the power of 2 plus k plus 2k, 3k plus 1, which is different from the left hand side here. So this means that this formula is not correct because the induction proof has failed. 
even if the initial step is correct, it's correct for the lowest possible number, we have tried to assume that it is correct for one particular number k. But we have failed to prove that this formula will hold if we increase by one. So this is not correct and this formula can not, not be used for as an expression for the sum of the first numbers in a series here. So this is one example. We have seen two examples where the induction proof has, um, has proven that the formula is correct. And we have now also seen um, an example where the induction proof has failed. And we have ended up with a wrong expression, a different expression on the left and the right hand side. Okay, one small example before we continue with the curriculum. And this was actually given in a, an uh, exam a few years ago. <coughs> we still have an hypothesis of a formula and the formula here is uh, 1 divided by 1 multiplied by 3 plus 1 divided by 3 multiplied by 5 <coughs> plus 1 multi uh, divided by 5 multiplied by 7 plus and the expression here will now be the formula to find these numbers in the series will be 1 divided by uh, 2n minus 1 and multiplied by 2n plus 1. And still, the index numbers are the numbers in the series. This is the lowest index number, 1. This is index number 2. This is number 3. And we can easily see that by when n is equal to 2, 1 divided by 4 minus 1 multiplied by 4 plus 1 will be 3 multiplied by 5. And similar, if we replace the n with 3, we will get this numbers. And if we replace it with another index number, we will get that particular expression, that particular factor in, in the series. This series, the sum of this series, should, according to the hypothesis, be equal to n divided by 2n, parenthesis, n plus 1. And then, first step, initial step, the base case, check if this condition is correct for the lowest possible number in the series. Lowest possible number is still index number 1 and 1 divided by 1 multiplied by 3 is equal to 1 third. This, if we check the initial step, should be equal to the expression here, n is equal to 1. 2 n plus 1, 2 multiplied by 1 plus 1, 2 multiplied by 2 is 1 fourth. Which means this formula cannot be correct. The induction proof is finished here. And this was uh, an exam problem, I think, in 2009. I think approximately the half of the class got this correct. And some others, they used lots of effort to try to prove this during the assumption step and the induction step. And usually they found out that this was actually not correct, but it could be, could, uh, uh, could be stopped here because since the initial step is, correct, uh, is not correct, this cannot be correct because the base case is wrong. And then it doesn't matter whether you prove that increasing by one from an assumption, which is wrong, will never be correct anyway. So here, the, the induction proof is 
finished at this step when the initial step fails. Okay, I think that's enough of uh, induction. As mentioned, the induction is used as an example on, uh, uh, on mathematical proofs. Uh, it's a part of the curriculum. It's also the two first formulas are also quite relevant during the forecasting uh, part to find uh, well uh, when, when you should prove the, uh, prove the formulas for some forecasting methods, which we will present probably uh, uh, next week. And uh, I will not go very much into details on other types of, of proofs, but you should uh, know that uh, well, proofs are important when you are dealing with, with formulas and, uh, uh, and methods and so on, and this, uh, th this should be uh, proven correct, because if you use wrong information, not proven correct, then of course the, the, uh, the consequences can, can be crucial according to uh, forecasting or uh, inventory uh, strategies and, and all types of uh, where you are dealing with mathematical models. Okay, uh, then forecasting. I'll just present or show the first chapter two, the PowerPoint file, which is, uh, was uploaded in Frontier yesterday, so you might not have had the opportunity to, uh, to look at it yet, but here this PowerPoint files uh, for these uh, chapters uh, will be used uh, to some uh, degree at least during my, my lectures and uh, I will usually try to, to upload these PowerPoint files uh, in a uh, uh, well, uh, good time before we come to that particular part of, of the curriculum of, of the lectures. So I think we'll take a break here. It's, it's fine to break now and uh, start with the forecasting part in 15 minutes and then of course we will continue with forecasting for, for the next uh, lectures, the, the coming Tuesdays. Okay, then we'll meet again at 12.15.